Well, it seems that I've had a few technical difficulties in getting this particular video started, but I welcome you back and I'm glad to have you along with us. We are still working on our fireplace Santa stocking. Let me bring you up so you can see kind of the whole thing here. I did finish the candlesticks and did embroidery there. Now we're working on the clock, which is piece number 11. It's been cut out and I have outline stitched one scroll there with the dark brown floss. And I did that just like we do always um, on all the outline stitching. But since my camera wasn't turned on, you weren't able to see that. So I will stitch this one on camera and see if we can get that to work. And I am stitching this one in kind of an opposite direction than I usually do. I like to work on something as though it was a smile. But uh, this scroll is kind of going the other way. So I'm going to work on it, and this is an option that you can do, and you may find it's more comfortable for you to work with your floss up of um, your stitch instead of below your stitch. Um, I'm just a little bit more comfortable with it below my stitch. I don't know why, but I've just done more that way. Um, but they're exactly the same either way. It doesn't matter, and you can switch in the middle of whoops while you were working and in fact that's probably what I'm going to have to do here because of the scroll moving um, being in so many different kind of different directions there I just saw some white whenever I see the white line I just gotta get rid of it um, yeah so I'm gonna keep working with it up above here for right now We'll see when I get to the other side of the scroll that uh, I may decide to switch. I thought that. There we go. One disadvantage to working with a double thread is sometimes both threads don't stay together and taut and you have to kind of work them together a little bit there. Now, I have done this side of the scroll, and I think that I am ready to come to the other side, and I am going to uh, drop my floss to the bottom there for the rest of this scroll because of the direction that it is moving. That seems to work just fine. Okay, and I'm just going to finish it down there. And then I like to go back, especially on these um, outline stitches that are kind of scrolly or s swirly, and see if there's anywhere that I feel like the um, floss didn't line up quite right. Um, and if you find that, and um, first of all, you can always scratch off your paint but um, right here, no, I think, I think that did it right. But what you can do if you feel like the, the floss kind of um, went over the wrong way and you're not really seeing your design, you can come up right near that stitch 
and then go down just on the other side of the floss with a tacking stitch to hold it where it is that you want that floss to be so that your curl looks um, looks better defined. So I think that's better there. Okay. Now it says on the instructions that this is now just appliqued up here to the top of the stocking. And so I'm going to get it pinned right where we want it. And what I'm doing is I'm looking, first of all, I'm, I'm setting it down um, on the mantle of the fireplace, but then I'm also looking at this garland that's going to go here and making sure that my lines are lining up there as well. Um, not only covering this, the white lines here, but also um, making sure that I'm lined up so that when my um, garland goes on, that it will be in line with the rest of the fireplace. Okay, and I think I'm going to choose to stitch with this uh, with this kind of medium brown. Yeah, I think that's better. The red brown is is a little bit too red. Oh, I don't know. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty red. And I'm going to use um, again the rule of thumb that I use is um, darker. If you can't match exactly, then go darker, and um, you'll find that it's less visible. But I can also go here and look at my applique colors. And you know what? The applique says it should be, I'm appliquing with red-brown. So I, I guess I'm wrong. I'm going to put this away. Put this medium brown away and go to my red-brown and use what they tell me. And what I'm doing there when I'm when I'm finding that out or figuring that out is I am looking at my um, symbol chart and the top section of the symbol chart talks to you about applique and then it lists a number of colors that are to be used for that applique that it's talking about and in this case you can see that right here that when I come down I've got light taupe it's certainly not the light taupe but it, the only brown it lists for appliquing is the red brown so that tells me that they want me to use the red brown on this so I will follow their directions and get a needle threaded up with red brown and again, I probably have said it a thousand times. Hopefully not all of those times on this video, but you're going to applique with a single strand. Well, you, you know, it works better if you actually get that strand in the eye of the needle. There we go. <laughs> nope. Nope. I thought my eyes were feeling a little funky today. There we go. I think I got it that time. Yep. Um, and so I'm going to put the knot in only one strand, not two. And we will applique stitch all the way around. I'm going to start down here. At this bottom corner right here. And I am not terribly at all concerned about making sure that I get the clock 
right on top of the mantle because we will have a beautiful green garland um, that will touch both the clock and the, the mantelpiece. So yeah, it'll it's what's coming over and it's what is all of this. So um, you don't need to worry about the clock being perfectly. Of course, I want it pinned on there straight, but um, it doesn't have to join to the mantelpiece because of that garland. Okay, that's it. The clock is there, and we just need to knot it off. That's what we have. All right, it says that our next step is to embroider and applique the clock face, number 12, to the clock. So that is going to be this piece, number 12, with the dark black line on the hands. And that dark black line is one strand of black outline stitch. So I think we're just doing the hands on that clock face. So let's find that piece. It looks like it will be a white piece. If I know what color I'm looking for, that always helps me. <laughs> let's see, I don't see it right there. Here it is, right there. Okay, so let's get that cut out. I believe, just to let you know, that these lines right here are the indication lines for where this number 13 is going to go. So we're just going to make a single strand outline stitch with black on the hands only. Black floss. Yeah, this looks like it's black. And it told us a single strand, so I'm only going to put a knot in this one end. And that. Now we just knot it off. Now let's see. I'm going to put this up here. Right here. And I believe it looks like it's probably 2 a.m. What do you think? I'm going to look at the picture make sure I'm doing it like the picture. But, yep. 
Okay, and then we're just going to stitch that down all the way around with a piece of white thread. Okay, sorry, I had to take a second there. <laughs> I have a shopper shopping for me since I'm doing this right now. I always like to take off the long tails. I just don't like a whole lot of mess on the back. And then we are just going to applique stitch all the way around here. And again, this is one of those cases where you've already got one piece, the clock, attached securely to the stocking. So I only need to go with my stitch. Um, I only need to go as deep as to catch the brown felt. I don't have to go all the way through to the back of the stocking. There's that. Now we can check that off. That is number 12, piece number 12. Applique the clock face frame, then add the sequence. Okay, so this is going to be a different sequence than what we normally would do. So the clock frame, I think, is a, a kind of a gold color. Yes, and Let's see if we can find that piece number 13. Yes, it's right here. And we're going to cut that out away from the others. Just roughly. And now we're going to cut around the outside, and then we're also going to cut on the inside. Cut that out so that the clock face shows through there. But although we usually do our sequins prior to appliquing a piece down, this time we're going to applique first and then put our sequins on. There's the first cut. Now what I do when I have to cut the center, I fold it in half and I make just a small cut. Now I can get my scissors in there and get right to where I want to be cutting. Oh, it's much easier cutting this direction. I don't know why I started the other way. Okay, and I do have some paint there. I'm going to trim away. And then that is going to go right there, just like that. And so, whoops, we're going to get it pinned down and then get out our yellow thread. Just 
to stitch that down. And I know some of you may be thinking, why stitch it down all the way around? You're just going to put sequins on it. That's going to hold it down enough, right? And in fact, I, I believe that's probably true. Um, I just have never done that. But I do have a friend who um, she and her daughter both do stockings. And I think her daughter's the one that first asked that question. She said, that's what she did is she just let the sequins attach the piece um, again I've never done that I have no good reason not to I'm gonna look at this a little bit see I feel like my clock face here is closer to this side than to this side so I'm kind of sliding it over a little bit so it looks a little bit more centered and again you know truly these are the things that only you and I whoever uh, whoever's making the stocking is going to see no one else truly will see these kinds of things will ever sit down and analyze oh is that is that right in the center Now I'm going to stitch down the center as well. and let's see I'm pretty sure those sequins are gold okay This sequin looks like it's been cut. It's not round, so I'm going to put that to the side, throw them in the trash. I have so many sequins that I honestly don't have to worry about running low, so I can be a little more choosy. finished it <laughs> so sorry but it's doing the same thing so no worries now it says that our next piece is uh, sequin and applique the mantle garland which is this green garland right here 
and it has, it looks like red sequins on it, and it says sequin and applique, so there's no stuffing. Let's see, where is that green piece? It should be right here. Oh yes, right here. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I certainly would never want to cut more than I intend to. And you can see now that we're beginning to um, make progress a little bit more quickly than we did initially in the beginning with those very large pieces. Um, the small pieces sometimes have details on them which make them take a little bit longer, but um, they go a little bit more quickly than the big pieces in the very beginning. <coughs> This piece will take some time to cut. Okay, there it is. Now it's going to get some red sequins. So let me get my red bead needle here. And this one, it did not tell us to use a an alternate order, so we're going to use the standard order and system of putting on our sequins and um, then appliquing the garland. Oh, got them bouncing all over. And again, this is uh, red and black are the only two colors of sequins. And I don't even know if this one has black sequins or not, but um, that you don't use the clear beads with. You um, use the color, match the color of the bead to the sequin, but not with red or black. So. We are ready. Some days I can hear the sound of those sequins, and some days I really can't.
Okay, oops, there it is. Now we just need to place it where it needs, <coughs> excuse me, where it needs to go. And I am making sure that the curve right here is going to line up with this curve. I think that has something to do with Santa's face. And this line is going to line up here. So I want to pin those. And I did want to make sure that I lined up flush here with the side of the uh, stocking. And this one is going to be flush with the rest of the pieces, but we can see that we've got Santa's head is going to is going to be placed right there. So, now we need some green. Gosh, I haven't even used any green floss yet. Not this lighter color green. Yep. So I need an embroidery needle threaded for that. And just like all the other pieces, I'm going to go all the way around and stitching it down. And like the last couple pieces, this is... Um, a piece that is stitched on top of other pieces so there's less concern about you don't need to stitch it all the way through. In other words you don't have to go through all, all the way through to the back. Pretty ironic. Here I'm sitting here stitching a Christmas fireplace, and it's June, and it's between 111 and 114 outside. <laughs> a fireplace is the last thing I want right now. We're just trying to stay cool. It's kind of crazy the things you think about when you're doing these things that are 
repetitive, but meditative? What kinds of things do you think about when you're doing your crafting? The parts that don't require a lot of super intense thinking. Let us know in the comments. It'd be fun to find out, to share with each other. I happen today to be thinking about my grandkids. Just found out that one of my grandsons has uh, made a couple more state records in his swimming. So yeah, it would be interesting to know what other people think about when they're doing these repetitive, meditative. And that's just what I'm thinking about today. Uh, any day could be different. And I usually have a song going on in my head, something I've heard recently at church or on the radio. I promise I will never plague you with singing because that is not one of the gifts that I've received from God. Okay, that's how it looks. The next bits are going to be these uh, these two leaves, leaves with the berries and stuff on them there. That'll be what's next. I suspect this is probably it for this video. So if it is, I wish you the very best of blessings. I hope that you are working on something that gives your heart great pleasure and that the Lord gave you as a gift to give to others. So have a blessed day and we'll see you next time.